cheating in school has become more sophisticated than just sneaking a peek at little Johnny or Susie's paper. Have you ever met little Johnny or Susie? I sure have. <laughs> <laughs> Programs powered by artificial intelligence are helping students get better grades. Now, in one case, a law professor says a computer program, get this, a computer program called ChatGPT has was able to successfully pass a law school exam. It passed a law school exam. Now, the creator of that AI has made headlines recently for its ability to write prompts, creating concerns over cheating. The bot showed strong knowledge of legal rules in its written essays of various types of law, finishing with a C+. The maker of that program has since launched a tool that can help teachers distinguish between the program and a student's actual work. But is that enough? Let's talk about it here on The Factor on Censor tonight. My guests are educators Dr. David Branham, also teacher Arnetta Murray, and of course, Dr. will be joining us in a second. He's getting <laughs> mic'd up. But first of all, Dr. Branham, tell us what this program exactly is, this artificial intelligence that was able to pass a law school test. Well, it's, it's really cool. <laughs> you could just you could just type in a question and it'll answer your question for you. It's it's amazing what it'll do, and so you can uh, you type it in and it can be complex. They'll give you both sides of an argument if you put the argument in. It's a uh, it's just amazing. So I mean it it's just it's awesome. And so will students be able to use this to cheat? Maybe on some assignments, but the rule the truth is they're going to be able to learn a lot more because of this. And so I think it's a really cool addition to the education, ed ed educational uh, value that you can get. Dr. Biedenfeld, are you concerned that this could help students cheat, or do you think it will be a tool in the classroom? I think like any technology, there is the concern that we're going to hinder learning, that students are going to take advantage of it to either uh, avoid some of the learning, but that's going to be a consequence that they're going to have to bear in the workforce, right? And so just like cursive may be irrelevant with typing, typing may be irrelevant with some of this word or text uh, to voice uh, recognition software. I think this is something that we should capitalize on because the technology isn't going anywhere. Now, Arnetta, you're in grade school. Mm -hmm, do, school. You have, do you have school? concerns about this? You know, my concern is, you know, we we can tell already whether a parent has written a test or written a work for that kid or not. <laughs> That's know. right. You, you got parents. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, so. the AI <laughs> for middle school parents. Just, I mean, so we know, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that this, this new uh, app is coming off, if you will, but teachers already know the voice. We know the students, so um, it, it's good, I think, for maybe universities, but I think for Kids that are are you guys like in middle school willing to give the student an F if you know the parent wrote it or you're just working with them? You know what the low you know, <laughs> what the, see how the <laughs> see how the tone changed. <laughs> you know, with the uh, I, I think with the pay scale of the teachers and what we're going through, we just do what we can, if you mm -hmm. will. But I think now um, we don't have to have an app. That's, we've been doing this for thirty years, knowing that these kids are somebody stepping these kids because we know their voice, we know how they write, we know. So um, this app, is, I think, is good for college. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it's going to be applicable for you know, middle school or high school. And Dr. Branham, you guys are dealing with hundreds of students per semester. Are you able to identify what they have originally created or written, or can you tell that it may be a bot? You can tell if you're. Uh, <laughs> you can tell. I can tell all all the time. I, I don't need. Uh, these tools that they have out here to say, okay, this is plagiarized. Mm -hmm. You can tell when a student plagiarizes, mm -hmm. but then you have to go through the due diligence of finding out where they got that from, where's your proof, and so forth. And so, yeah, you can do it. Now, there are some professors, just like seventh grade teachers, who are, <laughs> are saying, okay, it's not really worth the battle sometimes to try to punish a student, but I've always been one to, you know, if, if a student takes advantage and doesn't do their work, they're not getting an education. So mm -hmm. I'll go through the trouble of, of going ahead and, and going ahead, filling out the paperwork, putting it through, and sanctioning the student for that. Now, Dr. Von Biedenfeld, what Dr. Branham just used was a very strong word, plagiarize. Would you use that if you found out a student used 
artificial intelligence to create that paper? I would. I would. It's under that umbrella of academic honesty. Mm -hmm. And so we have these broad-based principles within ethics and law where we are asking students to use their integrity because some of these age-old principles have survived the test of time because they still work, right? The Ten Commandments are still valid mm -hmm. today like they were uh, with Moses. So in that same principle, we would definitely look at plagiarism because they're stealing work the, uh, actually the intellectual property of the software designers that are doing this partitioning system, those folks had the brilliance to come up with it. Now the students are capitalizing on it unfairly, unjustly, and to their own detriment. Do you think, and, and here's what, I saw a Good Morning America or Today Show report where the reporter used that particular AI to create a news report. And he said it was an excellent news report on what he was reporting on. Do you think this will make many of, and, and we've heard this before, many of the degrees out there, like English, journalism, irrelevant in the future if you have an AI that can do the job? Because that would put people out of the job. Yeah, this I'm is praying, a, though. <laughs> oh, go ahead. This is an age-old fear. It really is. But it never happens. I mean, people don't get put out of their jobs. Teachers will keep their jobs. This will just be another tool that you're ju just going to have to adjust to. And what, what we've done in, in the decades that I've been in the classroom, so I started out with a face-to-face -face lecture approach. Now I've completely changed it. I've revamped my entire class where I, I, you know, it's rare when I walk in and lecture. I have different tools available to me to help, to help the students learn. And then I use those tools and I can, I can expand on that. And it actually makes the job better, not worse. And Arnetta, what's your thoughts on that, right. making certain degrees out there irrelevant in the future if AI can do the job that, say, a writer can do or an English teacher can do? I think that we don't want to depend on that. We still want to use our critical thinking skills. Mm -hmm. That's what we're training. That's what we want to train. So I think both are needed. If we want, we want to be critically thinkers, but you know what? I might want to use that paper to maybe give me a more different view and then incorporate that to get the message out. All right. Yeah. We want to thank you all for joining us. Dr. Von Biedenfeld, we're going to pretend like you weren't late.